Good evening, Mission Control. Well, the cement pad came out pretty nice. Uh, I know some of you were asking if I made it really, really, really slick, and I didn't. Uh, it looked that way because there's lots of water in it, um, and it, the water was coming up out of the cement, but it's actually kind of rough. Uh, got some good texture to it, but uh, I didn't broom it uh, to some of your, your comments, but it did turn out really nice and I'm very happy with it. So not bad for a guy who's only done this like four or five times now in his entire life. So yeah, I'm very, very pleased with how this turned out. Uh, tonight I want to walk you through some of the things I'm going to try to do and a little bit of magic smoke that showed up uh, just a few days ago that I now get to deal with. So let's jump inside and go through tonight's I'm standing at lane three right now and this is the automation box. I got it all wired up. Uh, it's powered on. Everything turned out really nice. I actually have all the cables connected as well. I'll give you a tight shot of that. The valves are all working with the exception of one of the valves. It looks like it went bad. So I got some replacement valves coming, which I should have on hand anyway, just in case. Um, but we have the master control unit here, the slave unit. We have the relays, the switches, and we have a little five volt and uh, ground bus bar here. So I'm going to take you over to another one of these on lane two and tell you a little story of what happened when I connected two. it. You'll notice there's no flashy little blinky lights on this one. That's because when I hooked this one up, this thing and this thing started wigging out. And luckily I had a switch on this to turn it off, turn the power off real fast. But a little bit of the magic smoke came out of uh, some of these devices. So I'm going to have to go through and do a real serious check to see which ones are hurt bad and which ones just got a little hot under the collar. But in troubleshooting it, what I figured out is that the relay board, uh, you'll notice it's missing compared to the other side. Um, the relay board had something wrong. I think I got a little bit of solder going to the wrong place or maybe um, the power regulator that I had on it uh, was bad which sometimes you get bad ones out of the box, but I thought I tested them and I thought it worked. So maybe there's something else going on, who knows? Anyway, so I got it ripped out. I gotta fix that tonight and uh, install it tomorrow. But tonight what I need to do is I actually need to get lane four's power connected and pray that there's no magic smoke. Then I also need to build all the wires for lane two and lane four. Lane one is completely done and it's working really nice. Uh, lane three, power's on. Cables are on, but the one valve is bad, so I gotta replace it. And then it'll be fully operational. And then uh, lanes two need cables, this needs to get fixed, and lane four just needs to be connected to power and cables made. So I'm gonna get on that tonight. Alright, I just got the power turned off to this out, well I had the power turned off I should say before I started filming because otherwise I wouldn't have taken that off. So uh, now I'm taking off the top here, take that little thing off so I can put one of these in which clamps around the uh, power cord so the cord can't wrap around and get nicked inside of the, uh, the hole here that penetrates through the box. Keeps the wire safe. Nice happy wire. Is good wire. So that's going to come through there like that. So I do that. Cutter. I need to cut some wire off here. I cut this with a razor blade knife with a blade constantly touching something so I can't slip past it and hit my hand. Done that a few too many times. Then you still miss the darn copper here, so you gotta whittle it. Always whittle away from you. Learned that lesson the hard time, the hard way as well. Dad told me not to, but I did it anyway. I remember when I was in the fire department a long time ago, they have a class, it's called Burn to Learn. And the premise is fairly obvious, I'm guessing that in order to be a good firefighter, you gotta get in where it's hot and you gotta see what it's like to be hot. Otherwise, you might be stupid and do something you'll regret. You might get yourself into a situation that you weren't prepared for and training didn't teach you. That one. So uh, 
Just love that class. The name alone is awesome. Where are you going this weekend? I'm going to burn to learn, baby. I'm going to burn to learn. But the point is, sometimes you just got to experience things for yourself before you learn. And uh, the less stubborn you are, the more untrue that statement is. But sadly, I'm just too stubborn. So I've had to learn a, a few more times than I would care to <laughs> care to admit. But I'm guessing if you're watching this channel, you probably enjoy it because I'm that way. A little stubborn. My mom says it's the sweet in me. That's probably true. So I just got the uh, main power wired up and I am going to connect this <laughs> before I go do anything. Okay, that would be a good idea. What I was going to say before I clearly miss this is I'm going to go turn the power on before I get all crazy with closing everything up just to make sure no magic smoke comes out of this one. So if I made that mistake once, there's a good chance I could have somehow made it again. So we'll stand over at the power box. You'll get a nice shot here, and if there's magic smoke, you'll see it. That said, I'm hoping you don't see it. Okay. Get those high power wires out of the low power wire way. Right, we're set for a test. Testing, here we go. See a green light. Okay. I don't see any smoke quite yet. That's a good sign. I'll let that power up. I got power back. Let's go do some power testing. Looks like we might have some problems here. For some reason we're not getting good solid power. Oh, we got 12 volts there. That's my ground. Five volt bus. Five volt bus. That's wrong. Yeah, we got us a problem here. That's supposed to be grounded. Okay, well, obviously we got some problems here, and I'm guessing it's in that board, so I'm going to track that down and I'll get back to you guys. Well, in troubleshooting it, I'm back down to the board, so I think I got a bad solder or something on there. I did something wrong because it ain't hooking up right. So I'm going to take the board in, put it with the other one that I need to go through and troubleshoot inside, and then I'll bring it all back out here and plug it in. But tonight, just do this little minor surgery here. So it's pretty simple. But what probably happened is back here somewhere. Probably, probably a bad solder. There's anything obvious. There could be one right here that looks like it might be shorting out something. So, we'll get that inside and get it fixed, but in the meantime, I'm gonna shift to making cables. Probably fun making cables. Totally joking. On the cable making front, what we're doing is I have some 16 gauge speaker wire. I only need two conductors, so speaker wire is perfect. 16 gauge, nice and small, easy to use. And we just have to basically uh, pull them apart and strip them. Get all my tools laid out here, like a doctor. This. There we go, and there we go. Pick up trash later. Wrap these. And then, some end connectors, some butt connectors here. Put those on.
And then subscriber, thank you, told me about these. Uh, these aren't really a brand name. These are, this is Titan, but it's a ratcheting crimping tool. And oh my goodness, so much better. Look at that than the traditional crimping tool. Totally worth the money if you have to do a lots of crimps. I don't know if it would be worth, I think this is like 50 bucks. I don't know if it would be worth it if you just had to do, where's my stuff? Stuff's always missing. I don't know if it'd be worth it if you just had to do, you know, a few of them, but when you gotta do as many as I do here, um, it is highly worth it. So where can I put all these extra parts here, but I'm missing the one part I need. Okay, well I gotta go find my DC plugs, which are probably right in front of me, but I've just been going so long, I don't know where it's at. The last few nights I've had everything right here where I needed it. Ugh. And then I moved one thing. Never have moved this stuff. It's always nice though, if you are gonna start a project, of course, have all your stuff out first. That's what my dad would have said. Oops, such is life. Ooh, I don't need that, it's already cut. So this is just a barrel plug, and we're using this to actually connect into the side of the power box. And these are great, great types of connectors I've found for this. I'm using the black and white as a positive connection. And then crimper tool engaged. Boy, that's nice. Zing! A little bit of bad work camouflage, I mean electric tape. <laughs> it's important. I was using uh, heat shrink on these before and making all the cables inside, but for this go around, I'm doing a little more custom work on the install rather than just pure engineering, getting everything built up front. Made a few mistakes last time, so I'm building in place on these. Okay, there's that started. Now here I actually have basically what we're setting up. It's the valve, and then oops, I'm gonna take another good reason to love PEX shark bites. Just take that off. This is the removal tool. Very easy. And make this mistake. There's a little arrow on the valve. If you mess around with valves, you know about the arrow. So got to make sure the arrow is going the right direction. And this one, we're going to plug in, let me show you, plug it in. The only mistake I appear to make on the design of these boxes, other than the, of course, retarded decision, or a mistake on the board, which I have no idea what that is, is that I put these on the wrong side. I didn't think about the fact that I have, I put the valves running down the middle of each lane rather than on the same side of each one. So now I just need to run the wire underneath like this, no big deal and bring it over here. So I need to trim that. Put enough slack in there. A little loop there gives me some assurance that I've got enough slack. Okay, cut that off. Now this piece here, I'm gonna take it all the way off. These were the old solders I used on here and that was just because I didn't know about different connector types. And they actually make a connector that's built for this particular uh, end here. So we're just going to get this old solder off. And we actually have the connectors. These are cute little guys right here. There you go. So then they just slide right over the top, like so. Easy squeezy. Slide it on, slide it on, there we go. That's a lot cleaner than the other way I was doing it, right? Just gonna do that, what was it? Four, five, eight more times. All right, so kind of feel like I'm spinning out dynamite detonation cord here. I've got the first three done, and this is my last one to do on this lane. The last one I do tonight.
That's looking a lot cleaner. Right. Well, we just got lane four all wired up. The power box is hooked up, but we had the problem with the controller or the uh, five volt and ground board. So I'm gonna have to take that into the house, into the Martian lab, and uh, put that on the uh, voltmeter. Figure out where something. I'm guessing something shorted out because uh, other ones are working. Hmm. Who knows what I did wrong. Anyway, so I'm going to go check that out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I still got so much more to do. November 11th is coming right up. Uh, we're still working on the insulation. Really appreciate all the thoughts and comments that have come in on that. I actually have emails uh, out to the insulation supplier for the blackout insulation. And I also have emails out to the uh, manufacturer of the building. And they're going to get back to me with pricing and availability to see if we can afford it and if it can get here well in time for our November 11th deadline. I think the answer is gonna be yes. So that's exciting, but also really scary because I have to de-skin the building and put up new skin. So probably gonna have to have a big old work party for that one. Uh, it took about four of us to do the skinning the first time. So lots of lessons learned this one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.